I'm at the University of Adelaide's Australian Centre for Ancient DNA. And here we uh, extract DNA from extinct animal remains, human remains, and uh, human remains for forensic cases. Uh, we have a specialist DNA facility. It's a super clean laboratory where we can uh, extract this DNA, the highly degraded and, and chemically damaged uh, DNA from these ancient remains uh, without uh, contaminating them with uh, further modern DNA. And that's really important because contamination is a, is a real risk in the analysis of, of this old and degraded DNA. Some of the cases that I, that I work on currently involve identifying Australian war dead from the First and Second World War. So these are guys who have been killed in battlefields and whose bodies have never been recovered. So they've remained unidentified and buried in the ground in, in Southeast Asia or Western Europe for the last 60 or 70 or 80 years. Other cases I've, I've worked on include uh, missing persons cases and murder victims for Australian police forces. And probably the most high profile case would have been working on the Daniel uh, Morecambe uh, identification. Daniel was a young boy who, who uh, disappeared in the early 1990s. Um, his family spent uh, 10 years uh, trying hard to work out where he'd gone and what had happened to him. And in uh, about 2011, the, the police had a breakthrough and, and managed to find some skeletal remains in southeast Queensland. They called us up to help identify those remains, and we did some DNA testing of, of bones recovered from this site and compared that DNA uh, to uh, Daniel's brothers and his mother. And by doing so, we managed to get a match which confirmed that the remains were those of Daniel Morecambe. And that DNA evidence helped um, lead to the conviction of a, of a man for a, the abduction and, and murder of, of Daniel. How does this all relate to the Summerton man? Well, the Summerton man uh, is, a, is a person who, whose body was recovered. Um, he's very well known in terms of what he looked like, his, his hair and eye colour, so, and, and he's, he's probably his ancestry. So we don't necessarily need to do those sort of DNA tests, but we still have very little idea of who this man might be. So DNA testing of, of both the, the hairs recovered from a death mask or from uh, the skeletal uh, remains from recovered from an um, exhumation of, of his body will allow us to try and work out uh, who the Summerton man really was. And just like for Daniel Morecambe's family or family members of, of World War II uh, war dead, there's a family somewhere in the world who, who is missing a son or a brother or a father who doesn't know where he is. Uh, and so what we can do is take DNA from the hair samples or, or skeletal remains and do some really uh, high level DNA testing that allows us to come up with a DNA profile that we can compare to a growing database of DNA profiles from living people all around the world. And we'll either get a DNA match that suggests a, a familial um, uh, relationship almost straight away, or we can leave that DNA profile in the database for, for years to come in the hope that eventually enough people will, uh, will provide DNA profiles that we can get a, a, a match between the remains and a living family. Uh, that match may be close or it may be slightly distant, but it will allow us to then pinpoint who this man um, might be and allow us to, to link him back to his, um, his family.